Kevin, would you tell us how you and your team at Gun Show became involved with the Jackson Park Farm? Absolutely. So it's interesting. Um, some folks realize, but maybe people don't, that Gun Show is, you know, maybe a hundred yards from the school. We can see the school from our front door. And for years, we wanted to figure out a way that we could be more actively participating with the school itself. And so somebody one day mentioned, hey, you know, they have a garden on the rooftop, which I didn't actually realize there was a rooftop, but, um, or at least not a green one. And so I walked over here and I saw the space, but really no one had done anything with it for quite some time. And so we thought, yeah, that would be a really great way, but we, we weren't really sure how to kick it off. Well, fast forward several years later, frankly, and one of the kind of pieces of, you know, a lot of terrible things happened obviously during COVID, but I, as the sort of eternal optimist, like to see the things that were positive. And one of the positive things that came out of it was more conversation about how we could support local food infrastructure. And so the conversation of this garden started again. And then we had an opportunity to partner with people like Center Park Credit Union and the One Love Learning Foundation and Second Helpings Atlanta. So a lot of very like-minded organizations came together and said we could all play a part in this. We made the commitment to support the garden by literally purchasing everything that it produces. And that's how it, that's how it got started. And so out of, really out of nowhere, it's like we willed it into existence and it's been an amazing experience ever since then. Oh. And you purchase everything they produce. Does that include some fruits and vegetables that might have a few imperfections? <laughs> it absolutely does. So we, we made the commitment that as long as the students were willing to put in the work to grow the things, we were willing to put in the effort to purchase them. We were hoping, I was very much hoping, this is largely on my side, I suppose, to use this as an opportunity to teach younger people about the opportunities that come along with that sort of entrepreneurial spirit. Go out and create something and then take it to the market and, and find a way to um, improve your situation. You know, we wanted to show them that there was opportunity to, it's not about gardening or about farming, it's about taking an idea and then bringing it to life. And so for me, making that commitment so that they would have the courage to get out here and do the work and um, was important. And so, yes, we will take things, including something maybe historically they, we would have turned away, uh, because we want them to, um, we want them to feel energized by this. We want the, we want the kids, we want everybody who's involved, not just kids, frankly, to see this as an opportunity to do something special and to work in partnership with an organization who believes in what they're doing. How does the process work from farm to kitchen right. it's, at Gun Show. It's funny, um, of all the things we thought about, I think we neglected thinking about that when we first began. It was kind of just assumed it would happen. But in the very early days, things would come out of the ground and we'd all go, so what do we do now? Um, <laughs> and we realized that, well, we were missing this one piece here. And so what we decided made sense is that since we buy almost entirely from local farms at Gun Show anyhow, we could supply what we call market information. We could say, look, strawberries are selling for about this much money or leafy greens and so the students would be armed with that information we would weigh their produce we would you know we would come up with a transaction we'd write them a check and then they would have to bring it back but um, it, it, it it even came down to like how do we get it there and so for the most part they're carrying it across the street and so we get you know they come in with the armfuls or bin fulls of produce and then my team at gun show sits there and talks to them about it and you know, we come up with a plan. And, and now we've gotten to the point even where the communication is more where we know in advance what they think will be coming out of the ground. And so we're building that reputation or that relationship rather, much the same as we've had with many of our other farms. And we're treating this just like we would one of our other suppliers, you know, where we're relying on each other to make this thing work. That is fantastic. Kevin, what do you look for when selecting produce for your restaurant? Well, it's, it's interesting. So when we choose the produce that we work with, more often than not, what we're trying to find are heirloom vegetables, things that are unique, um, less commoditized vegetables. So we want to see things in a form that perhaps predates a lot of our sort of mass growing. And so we're encouraging these guys to plant varieties that maybe you haven't seen on the shelves of a grocery store in a very, very long time. It's just more interesting for us to work with. We also are hoping to 
one of the benefits to working directly with the farm is being able to dictate harvest time and say, well, we find that for us, this vegetable is best when it's harvested at this size. And that isn't something that you get, traditionally speaking, because, you know, romaine goes to the store at this size all the time because, well, maybe we want it a little bit differently. And so for us, our biggest thing that kind of moves the needle is the ability for us to have a bit of that personalized touch based on what it is specifically that we are using it for. And so there are times we want it different than, than other times. Where did you learn the specifics? I mean, you grew up in the metro Atlanta area. Yeah, well, I, I'm very fortunate in that I grew up to a very large family and one that had a garden, except that our garden was 100 yards by 50 yards. So uh, several of this over again. <laughs> and my family all collectively worked together to grow pretty much all of our own food. So I grew up oh. around it. Um, I hated it, by the way, as a kid, because <laughs> it was a lot of work in the summer, a lot of chores of cleaning things and picking weeds and shelling stuff, and it wasn't very much fun. But now, as an adult, I recognize the privilege that came along with that to be able to have a much stronger understanding of what goes into it. And also, um, inevitably, from the cooking side, a lot of the times, believe it or not, folks who really love to grow don't necessarily love to cook or vice versa and so being able to have that middle ground is really important. So you are providing this marvelous experience making students aware of growing food and then through the programs with your foundation addressing food insecurity. Right. Have any of the students asked you about careers in the culinary world? Well, and what, what would you <laughs> advise them? Interestingly enough, we have actually had a pretty good track record with students coming to work with us um, and understanding kind of what goes into a restaurant. I think we only have one of maybe the couple dozen that has actually chosen to do it in long term as a career. But I think many of them recognize that, A, it's an opportunity, especially when you're young, um, it can provide a really great job for when you are continuing your education or when you're kind of still trying to figure out exactly what you want to do. We get a lot of questions about should I do this, should I be a chef, should I become a chef? And I always tell them the exact same thing, which is if, it, if being a chef is the only thing that you can think of that would make you happy, then we want you to become a chef. We need people like that. If on the other hand, you're like it's either chef or any of the other ors are probably a smarter career choice for you. <laughs> it's a very demanding job and it's one that truly you can only be successful at if you really make that full commitment. Now recently with this program, for the first time ever, we've been having students ask us about whether or not farming is a viable career for them in the future. Oh, how great. The, the folks at the restaurant, I was talking to them this morning and they were telling me when they come in and they bring the veggies, a lot of them now are saying, you know what, maybe I maybe I want to be a farmer. And so we, we remind them that, you know, farming isn't exactly the easiest gig ever, but by that same token, in all reality, more the more people who become very committed to in, increasing not only the availability, but the, um, the equitable availability of local food in any community, I support that. And I think that, that these kids that are in here working are seeing something for the first time a lot of them previously did not have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, and so they have a newfound appreciation for it, but also I think they see it through a lens that a lot of other people can't see it through. They recognize that they can, that they can turn something that was once a dream into this really vibrant reality. I think that's empowering, oh, and I love that. Absolutely. Kevin Gillespie, here is to your continued good health. Thank you renewed health and thank you so much for the beautiful way in which your good work impacts so many other lives. Well, I appreciate it. I, I have, everything I've ever done that has been successful has been the effort of a very large group of people, many of whom don't get nearly the credit that they deserve. Um, so thank you very much, and I will share those accolades with, with everyone else who is making this successful every day. And as far as I'm concerned, you are the top <laughs> chef. Thank you. And 
Andreas, this is so exciting. Can you tell us how students work in the garden each day? Oh, it's such a great space that Maynard Jackson has for the students to be able to come out and do project-based learning. And so I bring my anatomy classes up. We learn about healthy eating, um, the wonderful, amazing things that can be made with food grown right from the ground, right from the roof of our school um, in this urban environment. Shoshana, what made you want to work in the garden? Um, well, part of something that I want to do as I grow older is like guard, like agricultural gardening kind of stuff and kind of seeing like the garden like growing from the seed to the fruits of the labor. Amir, you began as a student when you were in Maynard Jackson High School. Now you are employed by the One Love Learning Foundation. Mm -hmm. It's been a good ride. I mean, every time I come here to the garden, it's just a whole challenge. You gotta have that determination to come out here every single day. And the work, it doesn't get easy, but, it, but sheer perseverance, you can make this job a whole lot easier. What is it about the garden that you find most appealing, that really excites you the most? <laughs> Reaping the fruits of my labor. <laughs> I mean, seeing every plant grow is so unique to me. I have always been interested in plant growth ever since I was a little kid. It's like so interesting for me to see something actually grow over time and then you could just harvest it. The park, the garden itself, is what they call a mandala design. It's a labyrinth. And in ancient times, they used to use labyrinths as tools for meditation. And it's composed of kind of like a spiraling circle path. It's a meandering path that doesn't really have a purpose, but it serves a purpose because the labyrinth stands for wholesomeness. And it, it's used to bring serenity, comfort, and healing to the soul and the mind to those you know who walk it. And so this spiritual aspect of the garden is really uh, the, the child of Brenda Isaac, who is the founder of One Love Learning Foundation. During the administrations of your late husband, our beloved Mayor Maynard Jackson. In addition to his own work, you focused a great deal on developing international ties. And here we see flags of South Africa and Jamaica. Jamaica. How does this garden bring together well, students from those countries? Well, in, in several ways. <clears throat> Not only are they sharing the same philosophy, so to speak, from Brenda's One Love Learning Foundation of soil, soul, and society. Playing in the dirt, working in the soil, which to me is always, you know, in touch with nature. The soul that's fed by doing that, but also because Gardening is not just science, it's an art also. And Maynard always believed that public art was one of the most important things that we could do. And, and this is public art. This is public art. It feeds the soul. It gives us a reason to, to be excited and to look forward to beauty. And the third uh, leg of this philosophy is society. When we learn to treat each other with kindness, it's extended to others as well. And Brenda Isaac, as I mentioned, who was the founder of One Love Learning Center, established community schoolyard gardens, organic gardens in South Africa, which is what that flag uh, denotes, and also in Jamaica. And now here in the United States, at Maynard Jackson High School is the third part of that trilogy, so to speak. Can you tell us how Brenda Isaacs and the One Love Learning Foundation 
connected with Center Park? I believe that it was because of her reputation, really. Um, I believe Liz, who's with the, the PR department, uh, was aware of Brenda's work in South Africa and in Jamaica with the school gardens. And she had such a strong success story there that I think that um, uh, Center Park was ready to, to be a part of that in terms of coming back and revitalizing this rooftop organic garden that we have here, which you know fell into disrepair during the pandemic because we couldn't get up here. The students weren't allowed to come up and to tend the, the garden. And so, you know, we, we had to take a couple steps back because we couldn't work the garden. But when um, we got the foundation, uh, the sponsorship rather, from Center Park, I was just elated. And I want to say right now, thank you, thank you, thank you to Center Park for that support because it has made all the difference in the world. It has lifted my mood, my spirit. I'm so excited and happy to be back playing in the dirt, you know, <laughs> and I have them to thank for that and also for the generosity of Kevin uh, Gillespie. Thank you. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Lois. <laughs>